We are going to be talking about resolving vectors into components for tension, for example. To determine the amount of influence of a single vector, a force at an angle exerts both a vertical and horizontal component. There's a force pulling at a certain angle. Find the x and the y components. So if you don't remember, you can refer back to the vectors in the scalars video. But pretty much what it's saying is that with this dog, if I am pulling him with a certain amount of force, we know that the dog is experiencing a vertical force and a horizontal force. And if we take these two forces and find the y component and the x component, we know that that is going to be equal to the resultant. Here is our dog, Fido, and we have our vector drawn and we are given a magnitude of 60 newtons for the force that is being pulled on this dog. When we draw the x axis, we know that this is a 40 degree angle. Given these two numbers, we should be able to figure this out, given that we already know how to calculate for each side of a triangle. So here I am given the sine of 40, and this is going to give me my force for my vertical, or my y axis right here, over 60 newtons. When you solve for it, you should get 38.6 newtons for the force of vertical, of the vertical vector. For my x axis, I figure this to be 45.9 newtons. An 800 kilogram beam supported by two ropes. That is what we're looking at. So here is the first rope. The second rope is right here, each with a specific angle if you were to make a 90 degree angle. All holding up this beam right here, in, which is 800 kilograms. Well, let's go ahead and look at what we know. We know that nothing is moving, that the ropes are holding the object still. So given that we know that F equals MA, and that acceleration is zero because nothing is moving. We know that the sum of all the forces will equal zero. That means our x components are going to equal zero and our y components are going to equal zero. How do we do this? So step one, you want to first draw a free body diagram of the picture. So this is the picture, but we're going to put this into a little bit more user-friendly mode. Here is our free body diagram. So notice that my body is a very tiny point where the vectors are coming from, showing the tension in rope one and rope two, and then the mass, which is 800 kilograms of the beam. Now we do draw a, a horizontal line, the x-axis, in order to show that we understand that if you were to split this in in half right here, that you would have a 90 degree angle. If we're given that this is 20 degrees and the second angle here is 30 degrees, we should be able to find that the angle over here closest to the x-axis for, uh, for rope one is 70 degrees and we have 60 degrees over here for the angle closest to the x-axis for rope two. Step two is to break down each rope and the beam into x and y components. So what are those? Here's what it looks like. Here is the x and the y for our rope one and our x and our y for rope two. We also do know that when we decide we want to take this 800 kilogram, we do need to transfer this into newtons in order to better work with it. How did I get that? We used the weight equals mass times gravity and that will give us our weight in newtons. So this is the force of the 800 kilogram beam pulling on the the two ropes. Step three is to list all the forces in the x and the y directions. So here we have our three objects in of interest. We have rope one, two, and the beam. To figure out the x and the y components, you're just going to do your normal sine and cosines of whatever angle you are trying to figure out. So here we have 70 degrees. So for rope one, for the x portion, we are going to have a negative t1 cosine of 70. And remember that cosine is just the uh, adjacent over the hypotenuse and then when you rearrange it then you get this. And it is negative because it is in the second quadrant, it is going to the left. For your y portion or your y component of your rope 1, that is t sub 1 sine of 70. 
Over here in your second rope, rope two, you are going to have the sine and the cosine of 60. And for your beam, we actually don't have an x component, so that is going to be zero. And we have a y component of negative 7,848 newtons. And the reason why that is negative is because if you look over here in our free body diagram, the vector is going down. So therefore it is negative. We go ahead and now we remember that the net force, the sum of all forces needs to equal zero for both the x and the y components. So all we need to do is just add these up and add these up and set them to zero. We can go ahead and solve them. So cosine of 70, put that into your calculators, cosine of 60, add up these factors and set them to zero. So that would give us negative 0.342 T1 plus 0.5 T2 equals zero. And then let's go ahead and move this negative 0.342 over and then we get 0.342 positive T1 equals 0.5 T2. This will come in handy later. For your Y components, go ahead and add those up and set those to zero. And we get this final answer down here of 0.94 T1 plus 0.866 T2 equals 7,848 7, newtons because we moved this over one onto the other side of the equal sign. Next, Step four is to substitute one variable into the other equation. So we are going to substitute this into the other equation. But first, we need to go ahead and solve for T1. So we just get T1 by itself, and that equals 1.46 T2. We're going to take this and substitute it into our other equation over here. So all we need to do is put 1.46 T2 into this equation right here to supplement or in order to substitute for T1. Here is what I have. And when you solve for this, you should get 1.37 T2 after multiplying, plus the same thing, the 0.866 T2 equals 7,848 Newtons. And keep solving, keep solving, and eventually you will get T2, the tension in rope two will be 3,297 newtons. Yay, now we have our variable. We have our number for T2. So now all you have to do is solve for rope one by plugging in this number back into this small little equation up there. So we have T equals 1.46 T2, and we have our T2 as being 3,290. 3,297 newtons. Plug that in, multiply, and solve. And that is your answer. So now you know that your tension in your rope is 3,297 for your second rope, and your other tension in your first rope is 4,813. All right, this is the end of our T notes. Thank you very much for watching. Be sure you understand this information and can start to use it in class next.